All right, as we dig into multi-objective decision making, we really need to get into the relationship between marginal rates of substitution, which you learned about in part two, and weights, which we just talked about in the college example. So recall from the apartment example in part two that the marginal rate of substitution is just how much of one attribute you'll trade for another and still be equally happy. In our apartment example, if you recall, we had rent in dollars and monthly commute time. And our four apartments are uh, labeled now on our graph. Uh, apartment A up here in the top left, down to apartment D in the bottom right. And if your time is worth $100 per hour, that is the marginal rate of substitution you're willing to trade between rent dollars and commute time hours. We saw how you could graphically represent this as a slope on the graph. Um, and as you moved from, in this case, top right to bottom left, because you're trying to minimize the commute time and you're trying to minimize the rent, you got to better alternatives on the graph. All right, well, building on this, just know that when you set your weights, you are establishing the marginal rates of substitution, whether you know it or not. And most folks would say something like, oh, like, you know, I'll give commute time a smaller weight than an apartment cost because commute time is less important. Hey, that makes perfect sense. And I totally get it why people say that. Unfortunately, it's wrong. <laughs> It is wrong, 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 and it's even wrong. To make the point even more clear, this statement is incorrect, despite how intuitive it sounds. So if that's not correct, what? how should you think about it? Well, just to reemphasize, the way we did it in part two is totally valid. You can convert everything to dollars and it totally works. But if you want to use normalization and weights, which a lot of people like to use when they're doing multi-objective or multi-attribute decisions, you need to be able to calculate if an hour of commute time is worth $100 or whatever it's worth, what should the weights be? Well, because that example of the apartments made so much sense in part two of these videos, we're gonna use it again, but now we're gonna go through this example and normalize the values and weight it like we did for the college rankings example. So let's first start thinking about how would we normalize each of these scales? And for rent, lower is better, right? And so the best one in that case is $1,500 and the worst one is 3,000. So apartment A should have a one for the normalized value for rent and apartment D should have a zero. And the other two should be, because they're evenly spaced between, they're actually gonna be evenly spaced between zero and one. So 0.33 and 0.67. The monthly commute time in hours is flipped. Uh, the worst one is apartment A. And so it will get the value of zero for monthly commute time. And uh, apartment D will get the value of one for monthly commute time on a normalized scale, because it's the best. And you can see these values down here in the table. After we've normalized, our next step is to think about how do we actually get the weights? And we're gonna start, we're gonna use the $100 per hour. And the second key piece of information we need to get the weights, we need to know the marginal rates and the ranges of our different metrics. Well, the range of cost is $1,500 and the range of time for commute time is 15 hours. Well, going back and looking at our college example where we ranked the colleges in part three, I want to remind you of a key slide. And that's this one that said in bright yellow, if you know the marginal rates of substitution and the range of each metric, then you can calculate the weights. And in fact, we know the marginal rate of substitution, $100 per hour, and we know the ranges for each metric. Now we're gonna show you how do you calculate the weights 
based on this little bit of information. All right, well, we're going to start with the idea that our marginal rate is known, and it's $100 per hour. And what that's going to mean is that the score change of $100 should equal, so if we got a $100 less expensive apartment, should equal the score change of one hour, if we got a one hour shorter commute. And you know, the way we calculate scores in this multi-objective decision making where we normalize things, right? is we take the normalized value, I will say of cost or of rent, and we multiply it by the weight of the rent cost. That needs to equal the normalized value for commute time times the weight of commute time. So, okay, that's kind of helpful to say that the score change of $100 is going to equal to the normalized value of a $100 change times the weight of dollars. And that needs to equal the score change of a one hour commute time change. So a one hour commute time change in a normalized scale, whatever that is, times the weight for commute time. Well, to help us figure out these values, the normalized values of a $100 change in rent or a one hour change in commute time, I want to draw out what our normalized scales are actually doing. So I'm going to draw a scale here. On the top side, I'll label the normalized values, 0 to 1. And on the bottom side, I'll put the real dollar values. And this one will be for rent, right? It's going to be $3,000 is the most expensive apartment. And $1,500 is the least expensive apartment. If we were to have a $100 change on this scale in real units, how big of a change would that be in the normalized values? Well, it would be, hmm. The entire range is 1500 and our change is only 100 so it looks like it would be 1 15th of a normalized value change would be equivalent to $100 in real units. And I can come over here and do the same kind of visual for commute time, where our worst commute time is 20 hours, and our best commute time is 5 hours. And we want to know, for a change in 1 hour, what is the change in our normalized scale? Well, one hour over the range of our different commute times, which is 15, and that's it. All right, 1 15th, that's already <laughs> reduced. So it's actually also 1 15th of a normalized change. All right, well, now we can go back up to our relationship that we have starred up here on this line and say that for a $100 change in rent, 
That's a one fifteenth of a normalized change. And that times the weight for our rent needs to equal the amount of change we would have if we changed our commute time by an hour, which is, again, it's a 1 15th normalized change times the weight of commute time. Now, remember, the whole reason that we're doing $100 for rent and one hour for commute time is we established that the marginal rate of substitution for this decision maker is $100 per hour. All right, well from here, actually, really all we're gonna do is end up with a weight ratio. Weight of dollars over weight of time equals one. Interesting. Well, we have two unknowns. And fortunately, we don't just have this one equation. We do have a second equation. It is typical when we're doing weights that we want to have the weights sum to one. That's a convention that is used. And with these two equations, I'll just use su substitution in this case that will say, you know, the weight of dollars equals, it looks like the weight of time. So from, uh, I'll call this equation one, we can say that the weight of dollars equals the weight of time. And from equation two, I will substitute that in. So weight of dollars plus, instead of putting in the weight of time, I'm just going to put in the weight of dollars again, because weight of dollars equals the weight of time based on equation one equals one, and therefore the weight of dollars equals 0 0.5. And once we know that, and we know that the two weights are equal from equation one, we know that the weight for time is also going to equal 0 0.5. And that's how you get weights from knowing the ranges of your metrics and also the marginal rates. And when we get back in a minute, I'll show you a quicker way to do that that's not just conceptually thinking through it, but an equation that will help you do this maybe in a spreadsheet more easily. All right, as promised, I said I would show you an equation that would do just what we did so you could operationalize this in a spreadsheet or in a program. And here it is, it's just that the marginal rate of X over Y, so you might say the marginal rate of dollars per hour in commuting equals the range of X over Y, so the range of dollars divided by the range of commute time times the weight, and this is flip now, of Y over X, the weight ratio of those two attributes. Um, we tend to operate with this rearranged uh, slightly. So I'm just going to solve for the weights now instead of having it solve for the marginal rates. And we can go back and do this exact same example where we can say the weight of rent over the weight of commute time equals this is going to be the range of rent, so the range of dollars, so that's going to be $1,500 divided by the range of X. X in this case is time, so that was 15 hours times the marginal rate, and now it flips of x over y. So that's of hours per dollar. So in our case, we had we knew it was $100 per hour. But now here, we need the value in hours over dollars. So we know that that's just one over 
100. And if we multiply that out, we're going to see the weight ratio equals 1, which is the exact same thing that we learned last time. If we flip it around and we said, what if we do want to do the weight for time over the weight for dollars? Doesn't matter which one you pick, it's X and Y. I'll do this one a little bit faster. 15 hours over $1,500 times $100 per hour. Because now our X we can see is dollars and our y is time and so that is also going to equal one it's just doesn't matter which one which metric you assign is the x or the y so when you set the weights and you're normalizing as we normalize you are establishing the marginal rates of substitution whether you know it or not so you might as well do it the other way around set the marginal rates which are the meaningful measures of the trade-off and then derive the weights out. We already established that most folks might say, I'll give commute time a smaller weight than apartment costs because commute time is less important. Well, I hope you're starting to see why that is not correct. In fact, what you could say might be the weights are equal because an hour of monthly commute time is worth $100 of monthly rent. It's not because commute time and rent are equally important. It's because an hour of commute time is worth $100 of rent makes the weight equal. That's what we just showed. And like if you were to go in and plug through and do what we just did with $200 per hour, just as an example, um, if marginal rate of two was $200 per hour, you could say, well, the weight of commute time is, in that case, it actually would be larger. Uh, the weight of commute time is larger than the weight of rent because an hour of monthly commute time is worth $200 of monthly rent. Saying that they are more or less important um, is not meaningful. Let's think about how you could present such results to decision makers because this can be kind of confusing. If you can't say more and less important, what can you say? So let's start off with what we don't want you to say. <laughs> Take apartment D. Your, your MRS value is $200 per hour, and therefore apartment D gets a score of 0.67. The next best apartment is 0.56. Uh, we've already established those scores are meaningless to a decision maker, and they're not even sure what MRS means. So don't do this. Here could be something better, one way to do it. Hey, the break-even points when your time is worth $100 an hour. If you value your time more than $100 an hour, go with apartment D. It only has five hours of commute time and it costs $3,000 in rent. But if you value your time less than $100 an hour, apartment A is better. You have more commute time, 20 hours of commute time, but your rent is only $1,500 a month. Alternatively, you could also say something like this. Hey, as a base choice, take apartment A. It's 20 hours of commute time and $1,500 in rent. Um, but consider taking apartment D, and I'll really only take it if an extra $1,500 in extra rent is worth saving you 15 hours a month. If it is, go with apartment D. And then you're unlikely to want apartments B or C in this case. So you can see how in each of these two examples, we're kind of like talking them through the marginal rates with real actual values that they can relate to. Hey, next up, we'll show you how to do this dormalization and weighting thing, which uh, is technically called multi-attribute value theory in a spreadsheet.